Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to make this cute card. So stay with me, make a cup of tea, or get your crafty stuff out and make it along with me. I'll go through what you need and all the steps that you need to do to create this. Let's get started. This is what you'll need. You'll need this gorgeous stamp set. It's the Colorado Craft Company and it's called Better Together. You're going to need a sentiment. I have chosen this sentiment set by Clearly Creative Stamps Mama Elephant um, and it's called Everyday Greetings. Some watercolour paper or card, some nice patterned paper. Uh, I've chosen Spring Fling by Pebbles, a die cut set of a flower. I have chosen this Sizzix, um, what's it called? It was this one that I used and it's called, it doesn't have a name, oh, Wildflower Stems. Wildflower stems one. So we're going to use the flower from that and we're going to use this die to cut the piece of watercolour card and also some Versafine ink pad, an acrylic block, something to colour with. I'm going to use a mix of Kuretake Zig Clean Colour and a distress marker. They're all water-based so we can mix and match them. So let's get all this put aside and we'll make a start. Going to do some stamping first. Oh, and you'll need a card base as well. This card base is 15 centimeters by 11 and a half centimeters. So it fits this die cut background perfectly. So I have used my die, this die here which is Avery L Wonky Stitches and I die cut that through my Big Shot So I'm going to stamp first directly onto this piece of watercolour card I've chosen this image from the stamp set We'll put it on the acrylic block. Ink it up with the Versafine. I'm using the Versafine because my markers are water-based. So this won't bleed or run or do anything that it shouldn't do. Just rub off this bit here. And I'm going to stamp it slightly to the side so that I can get my daisy to the side there as an embellishment. So we'll give it a good stamp round about here. And a nice firm press. I do have one of those stamping platforms, but to be honest, I've never really gotten along with it all that well. Maybe it just needs a bit of practice. For some reason, I like to give it a good press down with the, just the old fashioned acrylic block and then we'll just hope for the best. It's only a piece of card, we can always 
die cut another piece. But yeah, that worked all right. So we've got that nicely stamped. I'm also going to stamp the sentiment. I would normally leave the sentiment to the side to the to later on in the card, but because I'm stamping it directly on to the piece and I'm not going to fussy cut this, I'm leaving it as is. I just want to make sure all my stamping is going to work out before I spend time colouring. So we'll just use, I've picked out Best Wishes from all of us, which I think matches the sentiment of the image. It goes along with all the little Mises and foxes and rabbits. So I'm going to put it up in this top corner and we'll put it here. And again, a nice firm. Give it a few seconds to sink into the card. There we are. Best wishes from all of us. Now, this stamp set gives a look of an old-fashioned typewriter, so don't think that it's turned out blurry or double stamped. It's not. It's actually the way these ones are. It's a look of an old-fashioned typewriter, which is quite cool. So we can put the stamping away and we can go on with colouring. So my plan is to colour the image and also colour the die cut, the die cut daisy because I die cut the daisy from watercolour card as well so I'm going to give it a touch of colour to tone in with the colour of the stamps and then we'll trim it down and have it there. I thought that was nice. So Let's get started with colouring. So I've got some water, I've got some napkin, I've got my brush and I have a little spare piece of, let's just take this off, watercolour card. Just to try out the colours before we dive right in. Now I'm also going to use the packaging from the, paper, uh, the stamp set just as a guide to colour. I always think it's good to copy the, the way they've coloured. Uh, as a beginner I started doing that and it's always been a great guide. Um, just to give you an idea. You might not want to copy it exactly and it will turn out it won't be exact the same anyway but it's always a good guide just to see what they've done and maybe do something similar. So we'll just sit that there and we will do, we'll start from this side and it's a little mouse here. So I've chosen some browns and I've got light brown, brown, um, an oatmeal and a beige. And I know that the oatmeal is very pale. So I'm going to, let's see what the beige is like. The beige is a better colour for this little mouse here. So I just put some of that colour down there, pick up some water, and give the mouse a little light wash of colour. We will be going back and adding some highlights. Now, I can see that the mouse is the same colour as the fox. So 
I'm going to do him the same colour. The little hedgehog is a slightly different shade, so we'll give him a little bit of oatmeal and I think we'll give him a little bit of white so that he's not solidly coloured in and the rabbit is the same oatmeal-y colour as well. And I'm, once again, I'm going to leave a little bit of white just round his front there. Okay. Now for the main rabbit, it is the pale colour. I think this is too pale to add the water. I don't need to add the water to this because it's already quite pale. So we'll just get rid of that so that we don't make a mess. Okay, so I don't need my brush, I'm just going to go directly because this is quite a pale colour and we can always wash over it with the brush if we feel. So we can see that he's got coloured feet, he's got a wee patch in his eye and he's got a stripe down his back. And then he's got a little bit round his tail. And then he's got just kind of little bits here and there. So we've done a sort of base and we're going to add maybe a slightly darker colour using the slight brown. So this is slightly darker. We'll do this with the water. Just make sure that we've got... Yeah, I think we'll maybe go a little bit darker again. Add the darker brown. Mix it in a little bit. Yep, yeah, that's nicer. So, we'll add a little bit of darker to the fox. There's a little bit of a guide where the lines are. In fact, we'll add little highlights to all of them we are. We'll go directly on and we'll just give that a little a little spread with the water. I think we've ended up doing them all more or less the same colour, apart from the main rabbit, which I think we might add in. This is a kind of grey. Let me just get rid of that before we make a mess. Yeah, that's too, too pale for the, the water there. No, that's not the right colour for that. Let's try the, what colour is this, the beige. Just highlight a little bit around the edges. A little bit of water. Give it a little, see how that just takes away the, the lines. Blends it in a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Can you see? And we'll maybe just give them a tiny little bit of dark down there. And then maybe just round his tail so that it shows up the white. Well, where's my oatmeal? Yeah. 
that's all we've left. Some white bits as I would contrast and we've added some highlights. So let's do the ground and we'll use this antique linen for the ground. Okay, so now we want to colour the daisy and for the daisy we'll do the oatmeal in the middle and we'll add a bit of highlight to that. We'll keep to the same colours so that it all, all matches quite well. Let's do just the tips of the daisy. A little bit of darker around the edge there spread that in a little bit more yeah then maybe a little bit of oatmeal just on the tips And I know stems are normally green, but I don't have any green on the card and I don't want to add another colour, so I'm just going to do it the same colour as the ground. And we will see how, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Okay, that's us done with the with the colouring, let's move the water out of the way. Right, so to put this together, we have the card base. We have the piece of patterned paper from the pad. And this on the top. And we will trim this down just under those leaves. There we are. Lovely. So let's get sticking that down. We've left the tiniest little border around the edge. There we are. And we will pop this on foam pads. I should have used my bigger roll. at the back of the cupboard I think. So this will do. Yeah. I'll probably find one of those wee squares stuck to the dog's nose later. Right, so there we are in the centre. We'll add this flower with just a little dab here and there. Yeah. 
That's pretty. Okay, and as a finishing touch, I thought I would punch two or three butterflies and um, just use the watercolour card. And I'll punch them over here because that will make a noise. Maybe that would come out. Come out. There we are. Let's do one more. Ooh. Okay, we'll give them a wee colour with the pens as well. You know, it would have been easier to colour the piece of watercolour card and then punch out. <laughs> anyway, that's an idea. So, we'll just... I've got a little tiny smudge there, so I'm just going to put that butterfly there. And one over here. And maybe... One there. Yeah. So we'll just get this spare piece of card, put a little splodge on. Pick up a little bit of glue. Which way was it facing? I think this way. It's going towards the flower. And this one. And there. And this one. Now I could put tiny pearls in the centre of the butterflies, but I think I'm going to actually leave it because it's quite a natural looking colour and I think that that's, I think, enough on it. So, this is us. All done. Nice. Quite a nice Easter card. So, thanks for joining me today and I hope you'll make a card and I hope that it's helped. See you again. Bye.